Welcome to this week's edition of Fox News. I'm Aaron Sexton. And I'm Sam Anderson. Outsourcing jobs in Tennessee is a hot topic across the state. Here on campus, state officials want to save taxpayer money, but many are worried it will come with the loss of jobs. Officials discussed outsourcing some Tennessee jobs two years ago, but vowed not to tamper with state jobs in state institutions. But now, they may have changed their minds. Jaleesa Monroe explains workers at UTC may be at risk of losing their jobs. Outsourcing of Tennessee state jobs. Many state facilities and maintenance workers are preparing themselves for the worst. Allegedly, they may be without a job or benefits in 2016. And state officials' efforts to save taxpayers' money may come at the expense of some state employees losing their jobs. There's some people that worry about it, but the majority of us are to the point where, you know, hey, we, we can't worry about it. We've got to go ahead and do our job, and, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. And if, if they do, if we just move on to something else, you know, and more than likely, if they outsource, they're going to hire some people that already work at university, but it's an if. We don't know. Many UTC employees have worked at the university for years, every dime made to take care of themselves and their families. This time next year, that could all change. One can only wonder, is this the only alternative? And is this plan actually going to save money? Uh, I, we're going to wait on the data at the end and see. But again, the preliminary look at the data suggests that we are doing just fine. And, you know, our, our staff, you know, in and around the university, it's a bit more beyond just contracting. Uh, these employees are part of the university family. They're part of the fabric here. Uh, students uh, know uh, those employees, and uh, it, it really is a very emotional kind of thing as well. Administration has not yet spoken one-on-one -on -one with employees about the matter. However, it does leave employees wondering what UTC's position is on the topic, what are they doing about it, and where do employees stand in the future? Uh, at this point, again, there's been uh, some conversation with our facilities folks and with our financial folks. And so um, our, they've been meeting with the task force that the governor has put together, and they've been meeting with um, the UT administration. I actually had a meeting with the governor to talk about the different uh, cost and, and where savings might be and things like that. Uh, but in terms of specific details and maybe sitting down and talking to individual employees, we're not really at that point yet because we wouldn't be able to tell them, you know, what their benefit package is or anything like that. We, we just don't know that yet. Although some employees are worried that they may lose their job, take a pay cut, or even their benefits will be gone, they're confident in the government officials that they will make the right decision and UTC will support them. I'm Jaleesa Monroe reporting with Mox News. Back to you guys. Governor Bill Haslam will meet with state lawmakers in Nashville later this month to talk about outsourcing. Mox News will let you know what happens. A nonprofit called One in Three came to Heritage Plaza Wednesday to visually demonstrate the consequences of drinking and driving. One in Three was named after the statistic that one in three people are affected by drunk driving every year. Co-founder Derek Yates says why he and his mother started the organization. On August 1st, 2011, my brother uh, was killed by a drunk driver. Um, so me and my family didn't want, um, you know, his, his life to go in vain. So we started that, and we've been raising awareness in the community, and we're doing events like this here at UTC, just trying to trying to help save as many lives as we possibly can, just by raising the awareness about drunk driving and making sure you have a DD and just you know just being responsible. Activities included a sobriety test, a pledge to not drink and drive, and a display of vehicles involved in drunk driving collisions. One in three also held a meeting in Roland Hayes Auditorium Thursday to share their story with students. For more information, go to iam1in3.org. UTC students and staff learned how to become healthier. The Tennessee Room at the University Center hosted a health fair. You could find massages, body assessment, nutrition, fitness, facials, HIV testing, and blood pressure all in one place, all promoting a healthier UTC. We're offering um, 
chair massages to uh, people coming through the health fair, uh, just kind of showing them where any trigger points may be in their back, shoulders, neck area, and we're also offering a raffle basket today. We are doing flu shots um, for any faculty, any students, a lot of the um, health-related programs are requiring flu shots, um, so that's what we're doing here at this booth. Chattanooga has launched internet service at 10 gigabits per second through its municipal broadband network. The city brands itself as Gig City since it first launched a gigabit service to all electric power utility EPB customers in 2009. The new service is also available to all 170,000 households and businesses within EPB service area. The residential service will cost $299 per month. A student by UTC found that the U network has generated more than almost 30,000 new jobs. Some days, it feels as if the world was built against you, but for some people, it really is. ASD Through Our Eyes continues the Disability Awareness Month series and gives a peek into the lives of people with autism spectrum disorder. This event aims to raise awareness of people that struggle with ASD, especially in the work field. Students shared their personal experiences and struggles through their life. The Office of Disability wants to stress that every ASD case is different. The series continues on October 22nd with Disability Ambassadors at 10 a.m. in the Chickamauga Room of the UC. Wednesday was the night of food, trivia, and free t-shirts at Straight Outta Complexes event. Representatives from the Residential Hall Association hosted the events to give students a chance to meet people and have a fun night on campus. Students are asked to answer trivia questions about popular movies and about UTC campus using the popular trivia site Kahoot. Before the event, students are asked to fill out a survey about possible changes to the meal plan provided on campus. Big changes in the SEC with a head coach stepping down and a star athlete sidelined. Our Samantha Olivier tells us why. Hello, I'm Samantha Olivier and this is your Mock Sports News Minute. Steve Spurrier, head coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks, announced he will be resigning effective immediately. Currently having a disappointing season, Spurrier feels as if it is time for him to move out of the way so that someone else can take over. Spurrier stresses that he is only resigning and not retiring. Florida Gators quarterback Will Greer has been suspended for one year for breaking NCAA rules. Greer tested positive for a performance-enhancing drug that was found in an over-the-counter medication he had taken. Greer will not be able to return to the field until Florida's seventh game of the 2016 season. UTC Mock's football team defeated Furman this past weekend. Derek Crane matched a career high with three rushing touchdowns and leading Chattanooga to beat Furman 31-3. The Mocs are currently 4-1 and, and hope to beat the VMI Cadets this Saturday. The game will be in Lexington, Virginia and will start at 1.30 p.m. That's it for your Mocs News Sports Update. I'm Samantha Olivier. A new club dedicated to the fictional genre steampunk is making its way on campus. The founder, Brendan Barrett, said what exactly steampunk is. There's lots of, you know, Victorian era fashion like what I'm wearing right now, but with a retro futuristic twist like, you know, the goggles or things like energy weapons, things that we don't even have in any practical abundance today. The Steampunk Society discussed upcoming events, conventions, and plans to add LARPing or live action role playing. For those interested, the group meets Tuesdays at 7.30 in room 303 at the library. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube. We air on UTC TV channel and housing channel 2.1, so tune in, have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.